Hi, everyone, and welcome to NCEFT's live series. You're going to get to see, learn, and explore the world of NCEFT through the eyes of barn staff, adaptive writing instructors, and therapists. My name is Alondra Ammon. I'm an occupational therapist, and today we're going to be talking all about different sit sitting positions that we use during therapy. So let's go. So today we are going to be using Ned. He is going to be, uh, he was actually featured last week. Uh, and Cindy is going to be our sidewalker. And then we also have Wendy, who is the horse handler. She will be what we call long lining Ned meaning the lines are coming from uh, the, the bit and going to the back and she's controlling him from the back. So let's get started. And we're only gonna use half, uh, not the full arena, we're just gonna use half of the arena to make our circles a little bit smaller and tighter. And hopefully you guys will get a good view. So come on, Ned, so typically, um, we have the option of mounting our clients inside or outside. We usually have our clients kind of tell, come on, Ned, or whoever it is. We wait for our horse handler to let us know she's ready. Are you good to go? Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can get on Ned. He's a big boy. There we go. All right. We can check this one. So just Cindy's checking the girth, all right? Just to make sure it's nice and snug and not going anywhere. And then I say, go please. So Cindy used Ned for the sensory trail. So, and she was talking a little bit about his movement. Ned is one of our wider, big old, big old barrel belly horse. And a little bit of what Cindy was saying uh, when she was highlighting Ned, he is so wide that he provides a very, uh, a nice base to sit on. I don't feel a lot of jerky movements with Ned. He's pretty, he's, he's like a little love seat. He's very comfortable to ride. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> forward and backward <laughs> oh, and a little bit of cough <laughs> get it out Ned you okay <laughs> I think that's a yes <laughs> so in sitting forward facing on Ned specifically we're getting more of this front back motion and my hips are going kind of down and up down and up so a little bit of that core engagement. Visually, it's kind of like walking. What you're seeing is coming towards you. The beautiful thing about being on, you know, such a, a dynamic surface is that it provides great movement and input. So not only am I getting this core engagement, but I'm also getting input through my legs, through my pelvis and through my whole body. And so for some children um, and writers that we work with, this can be very relaxing or this can be too much. So as a therapist, we have to really try to match the horse to the patient, the horse that's gonna provide optimal input into the, into the patient or the writer. Another thing that we can do in, in almost any seated position, can we do some walk holds please, is, so now I'm really having to engage my back, my core, so I don't fall forward. So even just changing the tempo, and can we walk up a little bit? Now I'm getting a lot more core engagement with him, just with a little bit more speed and traction in his step. Well, can we do that? Just like one trot, walk, trot. Maybe. <laughs> and now with that speed, with the trot, we're getting more up down. Having to work a little bit harder on my balance. And we'll hold that center line, please. So just in forward facing, we're getting a lot of different input. 
core, front and back, starting and stopping. When he's picking up speed, we're doing, we're getting more up down motion, head popping up, down, and a lot more engagement of the body and demands physically that the patient has to kind of uh, partake in or else they'll fall off. So now we're going to change positions. I'm going to go sideways, which is what we call side sitting. And you'll get to see, we'll do maybe not trotting, <laughs> maybe not trotting, <laughs> but we'll do some of the similar, uh, similar speeds and movements so you can kind of see how that's impacting my movement. All right, we'll walk on, please. This is my least favorite position for me to personally be in because <laughs> it can be a little bit challenging. So I applaud, I always applaud all of my my kids when they're riding side sitting because it can be a little challenging. So in sideways, I'm getting some lateral engagement, but with Ned, because he has a nice belly, my feet also are going a little bit forward and back. So a little bit of all, uh, total trunk core workout here. Make sure I don't fall off left and right. Make sure I don't fall off forward or back. So this is really good for um, the riders for, so that we can engage different areas of the trunk and core. Another thing that um, is a little bit different in side sitting is the visual perception that the rider is getting because now the information that they're seeing is not coming straight to them, but it's going left and right. You know, So that for some people can be visually disorienting and so we have to be mindful of that as therapists, you know, what position can our uh, client tolerate? Okay, so we'll do some walk halts, please. Definitely lateral trunk engagement. Because I don't want to fall off a Ned. Oh, oh, oh. Wendy's good. So Sometimes to even up the demand, we will have our patients put their hands on their head or on their hips while we do the different movements. So I'll put my hands on my head. Ooh, okay, a lot harder. Definitely engaging a lot more because I don't want to fall off this Ned. Ned has such a good base that I don't feel like I'm completely gonna fall off, but if you can imagine a horse that's a little more narrow, this may be a little bit trickier and they have to work harder. And so that's why we pick the horse for the rider, the client. Okay, we'll hold that center line. All right, so we're gonna move on to another position, which is rear facing or backwards. So now just in this position compared to facing forward, we have a wider rump. And so the uh, legs are going to be outstretched a little bit more, ab abducted, <laughs> which means that they're having to stretch a little bit more. And some of the reasons why we might put people backwards is to get more of a stretch if there's a little bit of tone. Um, and also to change the perception and the, and the demands. So we'll go ahead and go, please. Now this can also be visually um, disorienting for some of our riders because now the information is going away from them instead of coming towards them or going left to right. I personally like this position because I feel very secure on Ned. <laughs> it's a wider base facing this way, and so I actually feel feel okay. Am I sitting in the right position? Okay. Another different um, movement that we can do to engage the core a little bit more is some shallows, which um, will sort of target everything, especially in this position because you're having to counterbalance the, the movement. So we'll do a shallow along the rail, please. And shallow is just, shallow serpentine. It's just kind of like a little snake going left to right. And 
and I'm just having to, I feel my body just naturally activating different parts of my course so that I'm not falling off of Ned. And same thing, the information is going away. For some of the, um, the writers or the clients, backwards is not an option because this is just too visually disorienting. Um, it, they may become overstimulated and a lot harder to engage in sessions. And so as therapists, we really just try to monitor that to make sure that we're being as effective as possible during our therapy sessions because we want maximal participation at all times. Should I try hands and knees? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we'll do hands and knees at a halt and we won't, we won't move. Okay, we'll halt that center line. Okay, we're not gonna move with, we're not gonna move with this movement. I don't know, Chris, if you can get over here, over to this side or this side. I'm gonna do hands and knees, but without moving. I feel his belly digesting whatever. All right, so another position that we may put riders in is hands and knees, and we can do that either facing backwards or facing forwards, depending on what the therapist feels is going to provide the best participation, is not going to be distracting. So with that, we always stop the horse. I wanna make sure I don't hurt little Ned. Where's my hands? Make sure they're not in his little kidneys. Um, and if you can imagine, we do this with movement. Sometimes we do it without, but we usually do this with movement. And can you guys imagine the amount of strength and core engagement and everything that the rider has to do to keep from falling off? So this is a, a pretty hard one. We don't have them sit on this in this position for a long time. Um, and it's also a lot for the horse too. So we wanna be mindful of that. But a lot of the people that we do that on are a little bit more tiny, so they don't affect the horse too much. Thank you so much, Ned. I'm gonna turn back around and face the front. Ugh. Yeah. All right. And as you can imagine, even just transitioning from backwards to sideways to forwards, the amount of work the rider has to do. They have to pick their leg up. They have to balance themselves so that they don't fall off. Put their hand down, scoot back. You know, they have to really motor plan. And this is just a huge gross motor skill that, we're all, that we may also be working on. And so getting them to motor plan and increasing their gross motor skills, their coordination, making sure that they're not falling off, they're staying in place. We're also looking to see if they can find their middle are they sitting in the middle of their horse? Are they off to one side, over the other? And um, a lot of the times, if they're off to one side, what we'll do is we will manipulate the movement of the horse so that they find their center. And those are skills that we work on in therapy. So um, yeah, Ned, thank you so much. Are there any questions? Can't hold for this. Oh, okay. Cindy, can you come on this side? Okay, so Cindy's gonna come on this side. So typically we have sidewalkers, one on each side of, of the riders at all time. And their hands are typically on the patient at all times, unless the therapist instructs, instructs them to remove their hands. So if we're going to be going faster, we usually have like trotting, we usually have the sidewalker arm over thigh. If we're just walking, we have them down at an ankle. And then sometimes we get some squiggly worms that like to move a little bit more. And then we might do a knee and an ankle. And what else? What else is there? Those are the main holds. Yeah, when we're on all fours, we usually have the sidewalkers behind the, uh, in the front of the knee and behind the knee. It's been so long. <laughs> at the knee, at the knee, yes. Um, and it's, I mean, it's imperative for our, 
our rider safety, our client safety that we have that. And so it's really nice to be able to have someone on both sides during the session at all times for their safety. That's a good question. Any other questions? All right. Well, let's see if I can get off Ned. Ned, be kind to me. Leaning forward, over. And even that is a huge challenge for some of our, oh, even that is a challenge for some of our riders to get off. And how do, how am I getting off? And am I bringing my leg back? Some will bring their leg forward. Um, and then we have to tell them, no, no, bring it back. Um, or some can't and some have to do forward. So just a lot of different things that we do in therapy and nice fun sitting positions. And then we thank our beautiful horse, Ned. <laughs> He's like, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. He's like, bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. This Friday at 11 will be the barn staff, and they will be talking about, uh, let's see, what are they talking? Oh, long lining and different um, movements that they do while they're long lining. And Ned today is long lined. So the lines, like I said earlier, going from here to the back. So you'll get to see some of the movements that the barn staff and the horse handlers uh, do during sessions. So thank you so much, Ned. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you on Friday at 11 o'clock. Bye.